Larry, it's a uh, strange time in history. We've got uh, basically socialists calling for conservatives' heads on platters and kind of an inquisition. How are you today, Larry? Doing well, Jason, as well as anybody else can under the circumstances. I like the hat. Thank you. Yeah. So we've seen uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez talk about a list. We've seen Keith Olbermann. I think he was the one calling for heads on platters. There's a columnist with the Washington Post, an opinion columnist named Jennifer Rubin, who's claiming she has a list. And if you're a conservative and a Trump supporter, you know, good luck finding a job. What do you make of all this, Larry? Well, let me put it in context. I wrote a column last week for WorldNet Daily. You can find it at freedomwatchusa.org. The title is Get Ready for Revolution. It's, it's playing off of my book, It Takes a Revolution, Forget the Scandal Industry. And what I'm saying in that column, what I'm going to say now, is the hard reality. First of all, we have to face the facts of life. Our court system is not going to right the wrong. It's not going to right the fraud that was committed in the last election, regrettably. And there were a lot of forces against the president. I never give up. But as I say in the book, Thomas Jefferson predicted it. Federal judges and judges in general are not accountable to the people, particularly federal judges because they're unelected and they are political hacks by and large. They're put in there through patronage, through campaign contributions. And consequently, they're not gonna stick their neck out for President Trump, particularly after the dynamic that's occurred in the last several days. So we've got to face the reality that we're up against a Biden-Harris administration, one brain dead, the other one an evil witch, and we have a lot of power. There's a deep state in the executive branch, and they're gonna use that deep state on their behalf. Secondly, we've got a legislature, a Congress, that's a bunch of fools, court jesters, clowns, and criminals. They do little to nothing other than occupy space and take up tax dollars, and then, of course, there's the federal judiciary. But inside of the deep state, you see, this is where Biden, even if the Republicans retain control of the Senate, and that's a big if, because I frankly think that they're going to have a hard time doing that in Georgia. There's going to be a lot of money poured into that, those two races down there. But let's say even that they do, is that Biden and Harris have control of the executive branch. They have control of the Justice Department. They have control of an Internal Revenue Service. They have control of the Department of Homeland Security other agencies. They will train those against conservatives, people of faith, and others, and seek to eliminate us, you know, figuratively speaking, from the face of the earth. They're going to try to take total control, the socialists that have a hold of Biden. And then, of course, there's the Justice Department, which will be used as a sword as well. So therefore, that's why you have all of these socialists and communists and others coming out now calling for retribution, for an inquisition, for a purge, of conservatives, people of faith, libertarians, and others. They want to make sure that they gain total control of this country such that they'll never give it back. And that's why we at Freedom Watch, and of course, America's Sheriff.org, that I formed with Sheriff Joe Arpaio, have a big role to play in waging a second American revolution peacefully and legally, but also a very strong revolution. We're going to have to fight back with citizens, grand juries, Jason, we talked about this the other day. I hope that you can participate. We're going to seek the indictment of Joe and Hunter Biden. We're going to seek the indictment of Comey, the McCabe's, the Lovebirds, Bruce Orr, the Obamas, the Clintons, and all of them, because we, the American people, need to push back. We can't sit there and take it. We're going to have to dish it out in a way that we meet out justice. And we have the right, as I say in my book, it takes the revolution. I go through the history of it. We have the right for citizens' arrest as long as we do it peacefully and legally. And hopefully we'll find law enforcement that we can turn these people over to, to, to meet out the sentences that occur after we try them, convict them, and sentence them. Now, Larry, there's a lot of people who are feeling like there is some progress being made by Rudy Giuliani, and Trump has now added Sidney Powell to his legal team. There are a number of indicators that they're you know, he's not going to go quietly into the night, and there's a ton of evidence of election fraud. Don't you think there's still a possibility that this election could be properly scrutinized and we may get 
a fair and just result, meaning all these fake Biden votes get thrown out, redone. No chance. Larry, did I lose you? You seem frozen there. Larry? Hmm. That was a good question. I want to hear the answer to that. Let me see if we can get Larry back. See, they're already cyber harassing you with Skype, Larry. Have I lost you? Let's see if we can get Larry back there. That was dramatic, wasn't it? Totally frozen. Hmm. Even the backup. I've got an elaborate Skype backup system here that's supposed to avoid that, but it did not work that time. Huh. I tell you, it's amazing the array of difficulties that I run into on here. Um, sure, it's purely coincidence. Um, let's try and get Larry back. Uh, wow, he's totally disappeared. There he is. Wait, let's see. Is the computer dead? Hey, Larry, we're still live. I'm trying to get you on Skype. Everything okay over there? No, we lost the connection, it says. I'm, I'm trying to get you back. Hang on. Let's see if okay. it... Okay, great. All right. Great. Okay. We'll have Larry back in just a second. Larry? Hmm. You see, it's strange. Uh, let's see what we got. <laughs> Unbelievable. That was so dramatic, and then nothing. Ah. Oh. It's got the green light there. Add Larry. More info on Dan Crenshaw. Who is Dan Crenshaw, Harem Life? I don't know him. Salty Sphinx notices that this wide array of technical problems is happening increasingly often. I agree with that. There's a green light on Larry, but he's not, it's not connecting. I'm sorry, everybody. I know it's frustrating to tune in to watch a live stream and see me struggling. It says unavailable. Let's see. Larry? Jason? We're still live, so people can hear you, but it's not connecting on Skype. Are we being electronically harassed? I think so. I've been getting a lot of dropped calls today, too. I've never seen it like this on hmm. Verizon. So your Skype is up? It's, I mean, it shows a green light, which means you're ready. Yeah, and I just said the junk link call. Okay, so let me... It's not no, here. Going Don't just... To terminate the previous call, and let me try and call you. Yeah, I, can, I can go in a hotspot. Here. Let me see if I can do a hotspot. I got a 4K hotspot. Oh. Let's see. I'm going to shut the whole thing down. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Do that, and let me know when you're ready. Just send me a text, okay? Yeah. Okay. So, wow. Well, we've got the comments here. Uh, I know Larry is feeling very much like this is it and Biden and Harris are going to sail in there. I was watching a lot of stuff with Rudy Giuliani today. It seems like he's got a lot of evidence. I was speaking with uh, Charles earlier. I want to talk to Larry a little bit about this Dominion voting systems. Uh, there's a lot to that. I've been actually speaking to so many different crowdsourced The Truth co-hosts about Dominion voting systems because it connects to so many different things we've spoken about. Um, you know, we've seen Mary Fanning come out with her uh, more nonsense about the hammer and the scorecard. They were really trying to get that over, and they've been quite effective. I saw it was trending on Twitter, and they even got Sidney Powell talking about it, but I think Sidney has it figured out. She was on Maria Bartiromo earlier this morning, and she was talking about Dominion voting. Dominion voting is not 
connected and the hammer and the scorecard, that doesn't seem to have anything to do with Dominion voting. And there was no real tangible evidence any of those people talking about the hammer had. I mean, even Bill Binney, I don't understand what he's doing on there. I initially had a good impression of Bill Binney, but no longer. Someone is somehow coercing him. This is my opinion, not, not Larry's. Here we go. Okay, there we go. You're back, Larry. Yeah, I'm on a hot spot. People, I think, have been messing around with me today. Uh, they probably have read my column. <laughs> you know, it takes a revolution, and you've got the left. I've been dropping a lot of calls on, on my cell phone, and now this. Uh, my colleagues as well. So it's very, very suspicious, Jason. I'm not usually one to think those things, but I think somebody is messing with us today. Mm. And it may be that deep state. It may be the deep state that we're talking about in the executive branch. But to answer your question, and I hope people are still there, yes, is that I wish that what you said is true. I support the president. I wanted him to win. I've done everything I can in the last few years within the bounds of ethics and the law to try to support him. But here's the problem. And even Maria Bartolomeo yesterday on Fox News asked Rudy Giuliani, why did you get caught, caught flat footed? Why have you done nothing up to now? There's a fait accompli. You've got the networks proclaiming that Biden's the 46th president. You've got every head of state, including the head of Israel, Netanyahu, frankly, who, who pushed the president under the bus after he did all that he could for Israel. It's unbelievable. And, you know, they've created a situation where there's no judge in this country that's going to overturn this election. And you've got four states that you have to run the table on. So what's basically going on right now is a public relations campaign. I think it's good to try to get to the bottom of what went on, but don't expect the judge to change the election results. And that's why I get my book, It Takes a Revolution. You'll see what I'm talking about. Jefferson predicted that we would reach the point of revolution yet again, we would, where we would have to spill the blood of patriots and the tree of liberty would then have to be refreshed. He didn't want to see that. I don't want to see that. But right now we have had a coup d'etat undertaken with fraud. But do not expect federal judges to straighten it out. And that's the problem here. So you can watch Fox News all you want, but right now they're happier than a pig and you know what, because they're boosting their ratings, they're keeping people glued to the television set, and it ain't going to happen. Well, but, you know, we should add, Larry, not all heads of state have congratulated Biden. The president of Mexico said it would be imprudent to uh, congratulate Biden prior to the legal aspects being sorted out. Putin has not yet acknowledged. I mean, these leaders of other countries are abiding by the law. The news just announced that Biden had won. I mean, this is absolutely crazy. I mean, I hear where you're coming from as far as the pressure, the political pressure that's being put on federal judges and stuff like that. But at the same time, uh, whether people voted for Joe Biden or Donald Trump, no honest person could allow a victory by fraud to stand. I mean, we're a country of rules and laws, not maniacs who just publish whatever they want on Twitter and then make that the rule. I know you're playing devil's advocate here, okay? You know the way it works, Jason. I've been right about everything. You know, people sometimes think, you know, Larry is a pessimist or, you know, he's doing this because he's trying to maximize the position of himself and Freedom Watch. I predicted it, you know, and I wanted the president to win. But you know that I was very skeptical about his chances because of these forces. What I'm saying is we have to go outside of the system to reclaim this country and the system of our so-called government. We have to form our own government. We do it ethically. We do it legally. We do it peacefully. But do not expect these federal judges to reverse this election. You know, and in terms of the way it's worked historically, we know President Trump himself was declared a victor before the election results were certified. They shouldn't have done that this time, particularly Fox. Fox is dead. It's finished. It's passed. People see how two-faced it is. You know, having uh, called Arizona way before even CNN and MSNBC and the other networks is frankly unbelievable. And they are, uh, at the same time that they're playing this game for their ratings to draw people to watch, they have a Chiron on the screen. Joe Biden elected 46th president. I mean, that's unbelievable. So th what I'm saying is these federal judges, they're political animals. The federal judges, when it comes to these cases, are uniformly political hacks. Political hacks. Even Giuliani talked about that the other day. 
and they're not going to reverse this election. So you can believe anything you want. Other predictions, and you know that I was right. I told you that blowhard Bill Barr, the attorney general, and his stooge up there in Connecticut, John Durham, were not going to do anything with regard to Comey or with regard to Clapper or Brennan or McCabe or any of them. He declared the Bidens off limits. He declared the Obamas and the Clintons off limits. He screwed around so long that now we don't have control of the Justice Department through Trump. So, you know, I know what goes on. I've spent 40 some years doing this. And the American people should not be deceived because Fox News wants to boost its ratings. Yeah. It's time to do well, something else. No, you're absolutely right, Larry. But I just want to, you know, sort of put a point on this. At this point, a federal court wouldn't be actually reversing the election, right? I mean, we haven't had the electors of the states actually even. This is why it's so crazy that they're saying that he's president-elect. I mean, to say we project he's going to win and all that sort of stuff is okay. The more responsible outlets at least have been, you know, they're making a projection and stating it as such. But I've got this, uh, this is from Congress. Dot gov, the Electoral College presidential timeline, the state electors don't even cast their votes until like December um, 15th or something like that. Safe Harbor deadline is December 8th. December 14th, electors vote in their states. So as I understand it, what's happening right now is the federal lawsuits that Rudy Giuliani is proposing, they are to provide evidence of cheating, evidence of ballot manipulation and potentially invalidate these things from certain states before it goes to the electors. I think there's still a chance that this could be worked out properly, Larry. I hate to say this, Jason, there's no chance, okay? There's no chance. I mean, you make, may make everybody feel good, but there's no chance, okay? Take it from Uncle Larry, okay? I've been doing this a long time, okay? And I wish that you were right. I pray that you're right. I was praying that Trump would win the election, but it was cooked, it was frauded, and it's been stolen. And there's nobody in the government, and I tell you, the Republican Party will be going to Trump in short order, give it a week, and they'll be telling him to concede. And if it goes to Congress, where you know ultimately the decision is made whether to accept the electors, it'll be the Republican Party that throws in the towel because they're so worried about their own skin, they don't want to look like they are in any way subverting an election, and they wouldn't be subverting an election, but we see how lack of courage they have. The only thing they've done with any degree of courage was Amy Comey Barrett. At least the president left us that, okay? Now, I don't put much stock in the Supreme Court. We've talked about that. You've got Alito, you've got Thomas, and maybe Barrett if she comes through. That's not enough to carry the day. We see how the other conservatives are either squishy or frankly have turned left by Chief Justice Roberts. And in any event, they make decisions that don't adhere to the Constitution. It's my view. If they violate the Constitution, we have no duty to follow what they have to happen to rule. And the Founding Fathers didn't follow the edicts of King George III when they were contrary to the law of man and the law of God. They did what they had to do. And what I'm saying right now is we need to rise up. It's no longer Donald Trump. I hope that he stays out there. He buys a network. He stays active. Maybe he'll run again in four years. But I've said he was not a political messiah to begin with. It rests with us, the American people. And now I hope that they'll see just how corrupt this government is. We have no government. We have no government. They work against us. And the Republicans, you know, are so cowardly, they allow this to happen. Where were they all these months? The president was predicting this was going to happen. Where was he other than just tweeting? I'm sorry. He takes the blame here, too. And they should have done something and moved in before this happened, before there was a fait accompli. Now it is up for we, up to we the people to reclaim our country. And that's where we are. And I'm not advocating violence or anything else. I'm advocating using our God-given rights. When you read the Declaration of Independence, when the, when the nation or when the rulers break away from the people and no longer represent the will of the people, we the people have a God-given right to abolish that form of government and to form a new government by and for the people with equal justice. I'm just paraphrasing for all. Right. And 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 under under God's grace. Okay. That's where we are right now. So either 
accept the fact that we're going to be living under socialism and possibly communism, radical groups of all persuasions. They'll be out there in the street. I believe they want to eliminate us. They see they have us on the run. They smell blood or do something. Get up off the couch and stop watching people like Hannity who lie to you every single night telling you things are going to happen. The American people need to face the facts of life. And right now we don't have a government and we don't have a judiciary that's going to straighten this out. Well, so Larry, what are your thoughts about earlier today President Trump fired Defense Secretary Mark Esper. Of course, I mean, I've, people are going to say, why am I bringing up the Washington Post? I like to see how these outlets are reporting it. They're already calling Trump a lame duck. What do you think about this move to fire Esper? It doesn't seem like well, something... He's trying to say that he's in control, okay? He is in control to some extent until January 20th of next year. But look what Esper did. Esper cut the legs out from under him when they had to send in the military because they were burning down the church in Lafayette Square, St. John's Episcopal Church. You know, and, and, and this guy basically, you know, is a traitor. He should have been fired before. And again, look, this sounds harsh, but the president has been taking advice, bad advice from people for a very long time. He hesitated. He should have rounded up all these radicals in the streets. I don't know of hardly anyone that was ever arrested and that's why we formed americasheriff.org, because we need police to do that job. And we need to protect them and further their interests. But why did the president fire him before? Because he was told, oh, that'll look bad before the election. Why hasn't the president taken action against China that's destroyed our country and most of the world? Why does Freedom Watch have to bring a class action lawsuit in Dallas, Texas, for the compensation of people who have been harmed by their health, welfare, and lose their jobs? Why? Do we have to do that? Where was the president when that had to happen? So you know what? He brought it upon himself to a large extent because he sat there and he took the advice of establishment Republicans. Maybe they gave him that advice intentionally and he was thrown under the bus. But now he's, he's rising up and trying to act when it's too late. It's now up to we the people. And I'm sorry to say that, but if people get mad at me, if they want to throw you know, tomatoes at me, go ahead and do it. But Uncle Larry is going to be right in the end. OK, and that's because I've lived it. I know the way it works. And no, no judge or group of judges is going to bail the president out right now. And if you go back to doing recounts, you know, OK, so maybe he wins Georgia. You got to go. You got to run the table with four states right now. There's a lot of votes out there and it's going to be very difficult to prove. Isolated instances of voter fraud aren't going to do it. It has to be widespread. Now, let's get to the BS that's being sent out there by Sydney Powell right now. Sydney no, she Powell. stopped. It's not Sydney. It's Mary Fanning and that whole crew, Dave Janda. Uh, whoever, whoever it may be. You know, uh, the software that they're talking about, and this is a matter of public record, is so old that your cell phone has more capability, okay? So the yes, maybe, maybe there was software that was used or whatever to manipulate the election results. But I think it's more likely that since you had mostly paper ballots that were mailed in, that they created ballots and dumped them, you know, in the registrar registrars of all these different states. It's, it's the, probably the answer is in the paper ballot. It's going to be very difficult to show because apparently there were people there that were filling things in and correcting things behind closed doors, and it's extremely difficult. Will there, will there be enough to overturn in four states? No, there won't be enough, and no judge is going to enforce that. Well, but I, well, hang on a second, Larry. I want to bring you up to speed because I agree with you what you're saying about the hammer and the scorecard. That seems like a real big misdirect away from this, this Delian project that involves Dominion voting systems. And there is uh, very widespread corruption connected to this. This is a page from the Clinton Foundation, one of their famous commitments to action, which is basically as legally binding as a memorandum of understanding, which is not binding at all. And this is talking about, you know, a system that they were going to put into emerging democracies to help avoid, you know, violence and unrest when it takes too long to calculate the results of an election, which seems to be exactly what we're seeing right now. I believe there is a lot of evidence of widespread corruption. And I, I just... I, hope, I know you're very busy with a lot of cases, and it's difficult to stay on top for all these details. I share your frustration with the speed at which 
The president has been responding, but what would stop him? I mean, he's just fired Mark Esper. As you point out, he's no longer concerned, perhaps, with the political optics of what will this look like. What stops him from just firing William Barr tomorrow and putting in a... He should, he should but he won't do it. He won't do it. Hey, look, I'm, I'm volunteering. I'll go in there. I'll indict all these people, okay? Do it. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, I haven't talked to him in four years because Roger Stone's been defaming him. You know, he was my my uh, campaign manager for a few weeks when I ran for the Senate. He, he and his staff left off with about a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment. We, you know, we had to go our own separate ways. He's defamed Corsi. He's defamed me. I believe that that's kept me away from the president. So I haven't been able to communicate with him. But I've been defending the president anyway. And and you, know, you got to ask yourself the question: Where was Giuliani? Where was Jay Sekulow? Where were all these other lawyers when we had to get dragged through for three years a Russian collusion investigation when I sued Mueller for violations of privacy and, and Fourth Amendment violations, you name it, filed a criminal complaint against him, filed ethics complaints at OPR and IG at the Justice Department. Why didn't the president push back? Where were these lawyers? Why are they just coming to the fore now? And that's why Maria Bartolomeo hit the nail on the head. She's one of the few conservatives left at Fox. They nearly fired everybody else. Where were you, Giuliani, when you could have done something? So right now, given the fait accompli that has been created, yes, there's massive fraud. Yes, the election was stolen. But we, the American people, need to rise up. Our legal system was stolen by King George III. Did we ask the King George III's judges to straighten it out? You know how you know what the result would have been with that is yes men. And that's what we've got. Get in my book, it takes a revolution. Because of the president's bad advice, the judges that he put on the bench, by and large, are worthless. I've been in front of eight of them and I go through it. I use the French expression, the more things change, the more they remain the same. They're not courageous. They got there through political contributions. They're part of this Republican swamp, this establishment swamp. They have no guts and they won't even stand up for the president in the end. Because the cases I brought have been to help the president. And they're now on appeal, whether it's with social media, and I trust case well, well before the Justice Department, whether it's other cases I brought, uh, you know, they don't want to put their foot down and they don't want to stick their neck out because they're holding their fingers in the wind thinking this president may not be around much longer. You do have an excellent track record, Larry, and I know that what you're saying doesn't come from a place of cynicism, but rather one of wisdom. However, there, there do seem to be signs that things might go slightly differently than you're predicting. The Chicago Tribune just a few minutes ago is reporting that Attorney General William Barr has authorized the DOJ to probe substantial allegations of yeah, voting like, irregularities. Just like he authorized investigations of Comey, McCabe, Clapper, Brennan, where did those go, Jason? He's protecting his own skin right now. I mean, he doesn't want to be figuratively lynched by the right. Okay, I'm not talking about lynching him. Okay, I'm talking about you know, completely ostracized. Yeah, yeah I ostracized. Look, the past is a prologue. And the American people, and this is why I'm, um, you know, pushing back to your devil's advocate approach here, is the American people need to rise up themselves. Forget about Donald Trump. It's over. It's over. OK, he, he did. Some, he did really good things. We thank him for that. And I hope that he stays around to, to be part of this discourse. But now it's up to us because it wasn't just a personal hit on him. It was a personal hit on the American people and people who are conservative, who are libertarians, who are people of faith, who believe in our Constitution, who believe in the vision of our founding fathers and that great concept that shining city on a hill that needs to be rectified. But Jason, it's not right to hold out false hope to people right now. It's time for people to act. Get, I'm, not. I'm tired, I'm tired of, of people doing nothing in this country. People haven't done shit. I'm sorry to say that, excuse the French. Okay, you wanna sit there and watch Trump and ask him to do everything for you? He did a great job. Now it's our turn, peacefully and legally. There was an announcement earlier this morning, Larry, or maybe yesterday, that the New York Bar Association has made some kind of announcement about mandatory vaccinations. What is going on with that? It seemed to start with uh, 
Dershowitz, and then why, why is the Bar Association talking about mandatory, I mean, this is a recommendation, so who cares what lawyers recommend about medical stuff? Good question. I mean, look, everybody is in bed with everybody else. Look at what happened today with Pfizer. Okay, Pfizer announces that they've got a vaccine that's going to be 90% effective. I won't take it. You won't take it. But why did they announce that just a few days after the election? Question, are they in bed with Biden? Did they throw their lot with Biden? Where's the vaccine made? Is it made in China? I don't know. I frankly think the Chinese may have colluded with Biden and the Democrat Party to release this, this virus to take down President Trump. Yeah. Why isn't our blowhard overstuffed attorney general looking into that? Okay. Why have we done nothing with, with the chai -coms? Why have we done nothing? And I'm tired of hearing blowhards on, on radio. Not all on radio. There are a lot of good people on radio, like you are. But Rush Limbaugh does the same thing. And, and I wish him well. And I hope he lives a very long time. And he's done a lot of really great things. But you know what? Don't give people bullshit. Okay. The fact is, is that we are in a crisis right now. We are in a revolution. And the American people need to rise up. And if we rise up in mass, we can succeed because we are on the verge of being taken over and destroyed by the socialists, the communists, radical Muslims, people on the Jewish left. And, you know, I'm Jewish and I'm proud of that. But, yeah, I mean, these are, look at the look at who's in the media that's destroyed this president. OK, these are not Jewish people. They're not Jewish at all. And then you've got radical feminists. You've got radicals of every stripe out the radical blacks. They're going to start fighting with each other. They're going to be in the streets. They want to take control, much like, you know, the Ayatollahs fought with the Mujahideen after the Ayatollahs took over. Or, you know, the Russians, the white Russians and, and the red Russians fought with each other after the Bolshevik Revolution. This country is going to come unglued. So that's why I'm getting emotional, because I'm tired of people looking to other people to do what we need to do. Our founding fathers did not look to other people to do what they had to do. They coalesced the colonies and they fought a revolution and they created a great nation. And right now we have to do the same thing. And that's the theme of my book. It takes a revolution. Forget the scandal industry. You can now get it on audio. I'm not going to make any money on this thing, but it was inside of me. It's my heart. It's what I believe. It's what I've lived for all these years. I don't see the answer at the ballot box. I don't see the answer with regard to the deep state and the executive branch. I don't see the answer in the legislature, and I don't see the answer for sure in the federal judiciary. So you've spoken about the fact that a citizen's arrest is a legitimate thing. What are the laws surrounding that? How can someone go about conducting a citizen's arrest, and what do you do, bring somebody not, to the cops? I mean, the cops won't not, even arrest people who assault me right in front of them. Yeah, I'm not advocating that you do it without thought. And I'm not advocating that you use violence or take someone in, you know, into custody yourself. But let's let's say California, for instance. I talk about this in my book, and there are other states too. There's a, a statute in California that if you see someone committing a felony, where you know that someone has committed a felony, you have the right to undertake a citizen's arrest. Then you must turn them over to law enforcement to take it from there. You have the right to do that. And the American people have the right to do that, too. And I'm grappling with how we do that without being violent or being, you know, less than peaceful, because that's my approach. But let's say, for instance, we indict Obama or we indict Biden or Hunter Biden or the Clintons. Uh, actually, we indicted a Mueller last fall. As soon as the COVID-19 subsides, we'll try him. But, you know, and, and let's say we go and you know, in front of their houses, say, turn yourself in. And let's say they don't turn yourself in. And say we ask the law enforcement to do it. Well, you know, President Trump still got till January 20th. He could use his executive power up to that point in time and order the U.S. Marshal Service to arrest them. And that's what he should be doing. That's right what now. I mean. Why can't he do something like that? I'm looking at this California penal code right here. So let's talk about this for a second. In the state of California, under penal code 837 PC, a private person is authorized to make a citizen's arrest in California when the perpetrator commits a misdemeanor in a citizen's presence or commits a felony and a citizen has reasonable cause to believe the perpetrator committed it. Why can't somebody just go, citizen's arrest, Hunter Biden? Isn't that unbelievable? The most liberal state, the most leftist state in the United States gives the people the right to do citizen's arrests. 
grand juries, citizens grand juries. Justice Scalia said it, they belong to the American people, not to the three branches of government. What did Wyatt Earp do when it, after the OK Corral, the criminals killed all of his brothers? He took care of business. He wasn't prosecuted. You know, that was in effect like a citizen's arrest. So I'm not, I don't want violence. I'm not trying to, to ignite a violent revolution. I'm not, I'm trying to avoid it. And if the American people rise up in mass and they say, we want justice, we want justice now. If not, we're gonna have to meet it out ourselves. Then perhaps we can get people to act. As Jefferson said, when the people fear the government, there's tyranny. But when the government fears the people, there's liberty. The government needs to fear the people now. So, I mean, I'm, I'm serious about investigating this citizen's arrest idea because it's something that we've heard about, like, I don't know, maybe on the Dukes of Hazard, but I've never heard about anybody actually making a citizen's arrest. And I wonder why that is. Um, how can people learn more about it and how can we do it without violence? It's something that John Cullen wanted me to ask you about. He wants to place Dr. Fauci under citizen's arrest. Well, I wouldn't advocate doing that, okay? Oh. You have to think it through. First, you have to bring an indictment, then you try the person, then you convict them, you meet out the sentence, you ask the authorities to meet it out. Then we're gonna come to a crossroads, okay? And that's why I'm hoping that we can get somebody in authority in law enforcement that will meet it out you know, a sheriff in a particular town or uh, the president himself or a governor or whatever. We need to try that first. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, justice needs to be restored to the American people. So that's what I'm saying. Just don't go out in the street and arrest somebody because you feel like it. Well, here that's in 2006, the New York Times tells their readers how to make a citizen's arrest. There are very strict rules of engagement, says uh, Jeremy McHenry. He owns a private security firm in California, and he's made over a thousand citizens arrests. Let's get this guy involved. Yeah, well, I think we need to get some retired sheriffs. I mean, you know, I haven't broached it with Sheriff Arpaio, but he obviously knows how to make an arrest. Right. And and uh, and I don't want to speak for him, but I know that the sheriffs around this country, uh, you know, are, are appalled at what has been going on with regard to the, the violence in the streets. I mean, just a month and a half ago, you had people on lawns in Beverly Hills with t-shirts, eat the rich, kill the rich. Jeffrey Dahmer, kill the rich. You know, it's coming. Now the left has been mollified. They've been kind of placated for the, for the future, but they're not gonna stay that way. And, and they're gonna be coming after us. They're gonna be using the IRS. They're gonna be using the Justice Department. Remember, they will control the Justice Department. And the big difference between the Democrats and the Republicans is the Democrats go for the jugular. They'll slit your throat. The Republicans are cowards. They run away and they do nothing. And, and that, these are the people that have been convincing the president to sit there twiddling his thumbs all these months. Well, I would differ slightly, Larry. I don't think Republicans are cowards. I think we're dealing with a principled group that wants to play by the rules versus a group of dirty fighters. I mean, if you step into a boxing ring prepared for pugilism and somebody pulls out a switchblade and stabs you in the liver, you're gonna lose the fight. But that's not the kind of country we want. Let's take Lindsey Graham, for instance, okay? A real sissy, okay? I mean, he got Comey Barrett in, give him credit for that, okay? But the Judiciary Committee, oh, I'm gonna bring in Comey. It's gonna to be tough questioning. We're gonna meet out justice. What has he done? Nothing. What has the attorney general done? They're both Republicans. What has Grassley done, who you know, was the chairman before that? What has Devin Nunes done in Congress other than to promote himself on Fox News? Sue Twitter. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, we, all, we talk about Nunes all the time. He's one of the biggest phonies on Capitol Hill. This has been a cash cow for him. So this is, you know, the, there's this expression in the law, race ipsa loquitur, the fact speaks for itself. So ask yourself what the Republicans have done to bring about justice. They haven't done, excuse the French again, shit. I don't think it's a matter of Republicans or Democrats. Lin Lindsey Graham is a deep state traitor as far as I am aware. He's pictured here with John McCain, this guy Bell Hodge, who's a well-known terrorist, and Senator Blumenthal, who can't operate Skype during a technology conference. 
But I mean, the guy that they are awarding this thing to or getting the award from is a terrorist and Lindsey Graham is smiling like a dope right there. I don't think just because somebody has an R or a D next to their name that we can automatically expect that they'll behave one way or the other. It's the, it's the criminal, corrupt rot that's in Congress and the federal judiciary. It's overwhelming, yeah. Larry. I don't, I don't know that a citizen's arrest, people, a lot of people are feeling very, Help us. I'm grappling for it, Jason. I, you know, I want to have a conference uh, towards the end of the year, maybe early next year, before January 20th, in Philadelphia, the birthplace of liberty, not where the birthplace of tyranny, which it appears to be today. Yeah. My home town where I was born and I was proud of. Let's, you know, kind of squeeze the leftists out of Philadelphia. And let's and this was an idea that I had, and I mentioned it on the last time I was on the show. Why don't we let the criminals commit crimes against themselves in Washington? Why don't we the people Go to Philadelphia, start a new government. We could even nominate Donald Trump to be president. Yeah. Right? He, he can pick the cabinet members. Our, our government has no legitimacy. It has none right now. I want none. to be clear to everybody. I want to be clear for a second, Larry, because everybody in the comments, we are not calling for a revolution here. I, you know, Larry has his statements and his opinions. I'm still hopeful, Larry, that I agree the federal judiciary may not decide this election in favor of Donald Trump. But whatever people think about Rudy Giuliani, he's certainly a capable attorney, a capable prosecutor. He was a very effective mayor of New York. The city was running much better when he was mayor and Bernard Carrick was the commissioner of the NYPD. That's the team now that's, they're up there fighting for the country. I'm not ready to give up on that yet, Larry. All right, well, have fun, Jason. No offense. <laughs> you know, if you're entertained, that's fine. I, I'm not entertained. I just, we can't allow this level of corruption to stand. We have no country if the news decides that Joe Biden is the president. You can, look, I've been a lawyer for 43 years. I can tell you, you can go in front of a court. One judge rules one way, another judge rules another way. You make the same argument, inconsistent results. Yes. You can be the greatest lawyer in the world. But if the judge isn't going to agree with you, no cigar. Okay? So I'm just telling you, the fact, I don't want a violent revolution either. I've said that. My book is exactly to do the contrary, to come up with ways that we can do it without getting to the point that Jefferson predicted. But Jefferson, who was a pretty smart guy, knew we would arrive at this point again. He said every 20 years, we're going to have to shed the blood of patriots to refresh the tree of liberty. He believed that because he understood the natural inclination of man, the corrupt nature of man. He said about judges, federal judges, they're no smarter or more honest than anybody else in society. So why are we putting in the Constitution Article 3 and giving them this power, unelected, unaccountable to the people? Now they think they have immunity. Supreme Court gave their justices immunity, gave the lower courts. You can't even sue them when they intentionally try to harm you. Wow. So they claim, right? Life tenure. That's not even in the Constitution. I talk about that in the book. It takes a revolution. They serve for good behavior. If Congress wanted to, they could do term limits, renewable for good behavior. I'm suggesting five years renewable. Will Congress ever do that? No, they won't. We know they won't do that. So we, the people, need to, to rise up. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, let's say we flooded Washington, you know, as it exists today, with millions of people in the streets. Do you think the government wouldn't, Listen to what the people said if they felt fear that they were going to be overthrown. And I'm not advocating that they be overthrown, but let them have that little fear that there is pushback. There is pushback, nonviolent pushback. Look at what Martin Luther King accomplished. Look what Nelson Mandela accomplished. Look at, look at what other people accomplished with moral suasion and the ability to stand up for what's right and to take risks. What risks do people take today watching Sean Hannity? Believe, what do they do? It's a waste of time. I agree. So I, I know that I'm, I'm being very, very uh, tough on everybody, but I'm trying to wake people up. You know, it's like, I've said this before, like the movie Mo Moonstruck with Cher, you know, when Nicolas Cage says he's in love with her, she slaps her, she says, slap out of it, and uh, snap out of it, right? Snap out of this. This country is not built upon looking to other people to do what we have to do. We built this country. Not the clowns in Washington, D.C., not the clowns and criminals in the nation's capital. I found it, Larry. Here is Cher saying, Play snap it. out of it. 
Yeah, play. It's not a video. It's just a still image, but that's what she's telling him. Oh, there it is. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I, I mean, uh, you know, Larry, it's you are the doctor and the patient is on the table and the prognosis is not good. But we all have so much riding on this. I'm just not prepared to give it up yet. Now, let's go back to Sheriff Arpaio. You were on the show with him a few weeks ago talking about americasheriff.org. People can contribute to that uh, charitable organization. Doesn't Sheriff Arpaio, this is a network of sheriffs around the country. Can't they start arresting the governors that are violating the Constitution? I mean, these are the people that need to do stuff. I, if I try to do a citizen's arrest, somebody's going to kill me. Let me back up. I'm not suggesting that we give up. I'm suggesting we go another route. I'm suggesting, in my book I say, look, I'm not like Tom Fitton at Judicial Watch. Another Judicial Watch victory, look how great we are, okay? Coming on with tight-fitting shirts and everything else, okay? <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I say, I say, frankly, I've accomplished little to nothing in my career, I've tried, okay? I've had victories. You know, I, only person to get a, a court to rule president committed a crime, okay? but. Clintons are still on the loose, okay? In fact, yeah. I say they spread away from the scene of the crime that would make Bonnie and Clyde envious, okay? You know, with Sheriff Arpaio, we killed executive amnesty. Uh, you know, with regard to the NSA, we enjoined them. But where's the country today? It just slowed things down a little bit, okay? I didn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. So I'm not beating my chest in this book. This book is not about me. It's simply talking about my experiences and what I've learned, and I want the American people to know what I've learned and to profit from it, not to listen to the bullshit on Hannity and other places like that, because we're being lulled to sleep for entertainment. And I, but I'm not saying give up. No, I'm just saying is that at some point you can't keep beating your head up against the wall. Right. And you know, Larry, a lot of people I think have uh, come to agree with your assessment that COVID-19 has been deployed as a biological weapon coming out of China. And frankly, there's a lot of evidence to support that allegation. What's happening now with the class action lawsuit against China? This seems like something that the president would be quite interested in. Why isn't his attorney general intervening in that and helping us affect service? We, according to the law, attempted service on China on two occasions. China actually wrote, the China, and the, I don't, this is not the Chinese people, they're good people, okay? I'm talking about the communists in Beijing. They wrote on the process servers, uh, it went through DHL and Federal Express, which is through the clerk of the court in Dallas, we do not accept this. Now, who are they to say that they're thumbing their nose in American law? So I went back to the judge and I said, we need to have alternative method of service here, Your Honor. We can publish it or whatever. Well, it's pending, okay? You know, federal judge is pending. You know, this judge is probably not going to have the guts to, to push it. OK, that's just the way it is. Now, we have a case in Israel, which is moving quickly. OK, that we may get some action there and we have a criminal case in The Hague. Things get bad enough. Maybe even the Europeans might do something. Who knows? But but it, it, it's doubtful. OK, and why didn't the president freeze all the Chinese assets? Why does the American taxpayer have to pay for this damage? You know, where is where is that? And, and let me well, get back to Soros and Gates. They're funding all this research. They're funding all this, uh, you know, stuff related to labs in China and, you know, push it with like Bill Gates is everybody's listening to him like he's the smartest doctor in the country. Look, this, the whole system is corrupt top to bottom, and that's why it rests with we the people right now. It was John Adams. I say this over and over again. I've been saying it for years doesn't matter how many times you change your government or rulers without ethics, morality, and religion, you will not have a lasting liberty. The American people must rise up. We can't look on the horizon and say, do it for us. We have to do it for ourselves. We have to find a way. So I want to have this converse. I want people to weigh in. How do we reclaim and form our own government by and for the people, peacefully and legally? We don't, we don't have a government now, Jason. We don't. 
I we agree do. with that, Larry. I mean, the interesting thing, Larry, you are absolutely one of the most polarizing guests on Crowdsource the Truth, because as I look at the comments here, I'd say it's a 50-50 split between the people who love what you're saying and the people who just, I can't even repeat what they're writing. But I want to remind- 50% is good. 50% is good. Yeah. I want to remind- With a lot less than 50%. Right. Gideon's Army, A Few Good Men. And I'm not saying violence, I'm not. The people that don't want to listen to this, I could care less, Jason, because you know what? They're lazy, they want other people to do their job, and if they continue this, this path, they're not gonna have a country. Right, well, and people who want to support what you're doing at freedomwatchusa.org can go to the website and read all about the cases that you're bringing and have brought. They can follow the blog. They can click on the donate button. And what's the amount, Larry? People donate, they're going to get a free book. $50. And we're using that money to do the citizens' grand juries and other things that we do, the various cases. And also, frankly, to try to mobilize the people in a peaceful and legal way and to educate. It's very important to educate. Look at our youth now, Jason. They're, they're being taught in school to be socialists, to be communists. Yeah. You know, even the Jewish kids are taught to be anti Semitics. Semitic and hate themselves and to, you know, favor Palestinians over Israel, that Israel's an apartheid state, you know, and I'm just, that's just one example. Christianity's being trashed. I'm both. I'm a Jewish Christian. So, you know, we got a big job to do. So those 50% that don't like what I say, I could care less because those people are the reason the country's in the deep shit right now. Yeah, no, I know you don't care what people think, Larry. That's been, it'd be impossible to be Larry Clayman if you cared about what other people thought. It's just interesting to see the contrast of, you know, people either love you or hate you, and that's an interesting aspect of you. Uh, we're well, almost out of... Look, President, this is why, you know, I was always in his camp. He came down the escalator in 2016 at the Trump Tower. And he says, you know, I know the way it works. This whole system's corrupt. I bribed them all. I got them to do whatever I wanted. Democrat, Republican, they were like whores. They are whores. He says, now I'm worth $8 billion. Now I'm going to clean up this country. Well, what did they do? They fought back and they destroyed them. And it's not he done was, yet. It's not done yet, Larry. Let's not. The fat lady you hasn't. Have, 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 well, the fat lady's about ready to go to the John, and uh, <laughs> you know, that's basically it, Jason. I mean, the fat lady, the fat lady has sung, and again, I'm not saying don't do anything. I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying you know, do something to my work. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I like seeing you laugh, Larry. I think the people who watch the show they don't know about the times that you and I have you know gone to dinner or sat in your office, traveling around, just talking and. You do have a lot of experience, a lot of wisdom, and I just don't want what you're saying to be right, as much as it might be. I hope there are still opportunities for Rudy Giuliani and the president's legal team to overcome this. I was encouraged by the firing of Mark Esper. I hope he fires William Barr. We're just about out of time, Larry. Anything else you want to share with everybody today? No, I, I want to thank you, Jason, because you let me Tell it as I see it. I thank Radio America. I have a podcast every morning. You can get it at, at RadioAmerica.com and FreedomWatchUSA.org and AmericasSheriff.org. Two S's in the middle. I hope people will support AmericasSheriff.org, and I hope that you will join Freedom Watch. And if you know if you if you want to join another group, that's fine. But join a group that does more than just get documents and go on Fox News. Okay, we need to rise up. We need to do something right now. And that's why I wrote this book. Even if you don't agree with me, it's only 1795. Read it. I mean, communicate with me. Tell me I'm all wrong. That's fine. But read it and, and digest it. And read the Declaration of Independence before you read my book. Mm -hmm. Read what our founding fathers had to say. They didn't wait around for Rudy Giuliani to clean things up. Well, maybe we could do another show with Sheriff Joe and talk about how sheriffs around the country you know, we got a critical period here before December 14th when the state's electors will cast their votes and solidify the uh, 2020 presidential election. Until our next episode, Larry, we're going to leave people with that. I want to remind everybody they can support this program by going to subscribestar.com slash crowdsource the truth 
or patreon.com slash crowdsource the truth. And I'll be back in just 30 minutes with Jimmy and Joanne Moriarty. We got a special report. The tribes of Libya are very concerned about this election, Larry. And it's interesting to note that Dominion voting systems also provided the technology for the Libyan election. So we're going to get some really interesting insights on that episode. I want to thank Larry Clayman for joining me and remind everybody to visit freedomwatchusa.org. We'll see you soon, Larry. And thanks for watching, everybody.